Oh, there they are. Nanako-chan came around. <laughs> she came around from being dead? I mean, I'm glad, but... Huh? What did you just say? Nanako-chan's alive? Uh, now, depending on what I said in that room, she could very well have stayed dead, so I'm glad that we went with the true ending. Are you serious? It's very rare to be resuscitated after one's heart and lungs fail, but it does happen. But until I know why she collapsed in the first place, I can't say for sure how well she'll recover from here on. Still, Nanako-chan's a fighter, and she's trying desperately to stay alive. So, so this isn't a joke? You're actually telling the truth? Nanako-chan... Amazing! Miracles do happen. I'm so glad. I... I didn't know what I was gonna do! <laughs> come on! Stop crying, you two! <laughs> You all should go home for the night. I'll speak with Dojima-san tomorrow about Nanako-chan's treatment. It's rather chilly outside. If it starts snowing, be careful not to catch a cold. Wait a second, where's Teddy? I noticed he didn't come with us when we went to Namatame's room. You're right. That's weird. I figured he wouldn't move from Nanako-chan's side. Teddy, where did you go? Oh, yeah, he has a cell with him. Wait, I shouldn't use mine inside the hospital. I'll try calling him up once we're outside. I'm guessing that has to do with being worried about it messing with the machinery. Nanako is fighting hard to survive. You must wait and believe that she will recover. Oh, there you are. I forgot to tell you. Don't pull that again, okay? You can't just meet with the suspect like that. Anyway, I came to give you an update on Dojima-san. His wounds opened up a little, but he's treated now, and he's fast asleep. Thank you. He'll be all right. Don't worry. Knowing him, by this time tomorrow, he'll be on his feet and yelling at people again. <laughs> uh, don't tell him I said that. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> anyway, I heard Nanako-chan's on the road to recovery again. You guys were being so dramatic that I got really worried. But this is good news. She'll be well again in no time. I hope so. By the way, you're all alone at the house now, right? Well, enjoy your freedom while you can. Dojima-san and Nanako-chan will be back soon after all. You sense Adachi's concern for you. And rank up. The Toru Adachi social link has reached level 8. Your power to create personas of the Jester Arcana has grown. Well, I better head back. You go home too, before it gets too late. Uh, see ya. Couldn't save. I couldn't save. Why? Mayumi. And that girl too. I couldn't save them. Huh? Uh, what's the matter? Feeling guilty all of a sudden? Sheesh. I can't reach him. Did that stupid bear forget to charge the battery? We took a quick look around the hospital, but there's no sign of him. I wonder where he went. Oh, and it's snowing now. Oh, it's snow. Hey, you're right. Wow, it's been a while since I last saw real snow. It doesn't look that pretty, though, because of this fog. I guess this makes it the first snow of the year. 
<sighs> it's freezing. Let's go home. Hey, Yosuke, if you find Teddy, don't forget to contact us, all right? I know, I know. Let's meet up at the special headquarters tomorrow. Man, that Ted. I hope he just went back home by himself. He's probably fine. But I'll hurry home just in case. Well, see you tomorrow. See ya. Good luck. Back in Namatame's room. Was it really right to stop everyone from what they were about to do? For now, you have no way of knowing. You remember that your cell phone has been off this entire time since you were at the hospital. There's something new in your inbox. Hey, it's Ko. I heard what happened to your little cousin. Is there anything I can do to help? Let me know. You know I'm there for you, right? We're best friends, dude. Daisuke here. I heard about Nanako-chan. How's she doing? If there's anything I can do to help you guys, please tell me ASAP. You've got the guts, man. You gotta be brave, man. It's Yumi. Where are you right now? If you want to talk about your cousin, please don't think twice about calling me. I'll be waiting for you. Call me back. You checked all your messages. They're from your friends in town. You remember you have friends out there who can help encourage each other. The case is still mired in an impenetrable fog, but you must continue forth towards the truth. You should go home before you catch a cold. Well, that was a lot. I'm gonna save the game. Alright, I guess I'm just gonna go to bed. Will Nanako be alright? Then there's what happened in Namatami's hospital ward. And the snow that started to fall. And the fog that won't disappear. What lies ahead from here on? You feel very tired. You should hurry and get some rest from today. This. Welcome. It's been quite some time. It seems you've been summoned to the Velvet Room. Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within your dreams. Now then, your journey has taken you quite a distance thus far. Do you believe you'll be able to successfully solve this mystery? I can solve it. Splendid. The precise destination of this vehicle, ah, that too is getting rather hard to judge. If we continue driving blindly, we may end up leading you further away from the mystery that you must reach. Well, why don't we take a moment to look back on your journey? It was for that purpose that I summoned you here tonight. Margaret? Voices you've heard many times before echo in your mind. Really getting it is totally different. I mean, really finding yourself. What's right? What you should choose to do in life? The answers to those things lie within you. You gave me the opportunity to start walking. I'm going to think about my life and set my own path. We are experiencing the words engraved into your memory during your journey. Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different things. All right, let's go ahead and think this through as much as we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, we'll just be lying to ourselves. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. <laughs> Come on, we've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right. Together. And it seems you have comrades with you as well. Those heading in the same direction through this dense fog. It seems the car has stopped moving. We'll be parked for the moment. 
Will I confirm our current heading? As I mentioned previously, this year will signal a great change in your life. Though there isn't much time left, it can be worth your while to take the time to stop and reflect. People are like water flowing in a river. There is only one stream, but all who pass through it are affected differently. Some travel fast, some change their course, experiencing countless events as they travel down the river of time. Just so. The state of this room reflects the scenery of your heart. Perhaps this may be a time for contemplation rather than action. You can hear something in the distance. It seems that you've been sleeping until now. You hear the doorbell ringing. Someone seems to be at the door. Teddy's missing. I looked all over the neighborhood, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I'm worried. Yeah, me too. He was acting all weird lately. Rise and the others are checking inside the TV to see if he's gone back to the other side. We're meeting pretty soon, so will you come with me to Juness? Where could Teddy have gone? In any case, you decide to go look for him. It's no use, man. We can't find him. No luck for me either. I didn't sense anything over there. The fog's so dense it might be affecting my readings. I wish I could do better. I'm sorry. Uh, Ted. Don't tell me he really went back to his world this time. We told him over and over that he could stay here. You recall the mysterious dream you had last night. This may be a time for contemplation rather than action. That's what Igor said, but let's think about this. I guess that's all we can do right now. He plays dumb a lot, but he's attached to us deep down. He wouldn't disappear without saying anything, right? I'm worried for Teddy myself, but let's trust in him and await his return. Right now, we must concentrate on the case. It won't be long before Namatame is transferred to another location. We must hurry, or we will miss our only chance to get his perspective on this. You know, I've been thinking about the case since, but something just doesn't seem right. Let's quickly review the facts. Of all the victims, only two were killed. Miss Yamano, the announcer, and Saki-san. From the documents we found in the car, we know Namatame had some sort of dealings with them. After that, there were multiple attempted murders in which we were targeted. It was only when he took Nanako-chan that we caught him in the act, identifying his modus operandi in the process. When I hear you put it like that, sounds like the dude's guilty. As a result of Namatame's arrest, the police admitted that Mitsuo Kubo was a mere copycat killer. Back up to yesterday. Remember when you said Namatame didn't have a motive to kill the announcer? That's what's bothering me. Right. Either he's completely nuts, or we're misunderstanding something. You lost me. She's trying to say that if Namatame is sane, then there may be facts in the case we don't know about yet. Sane or insane? Sounds like a play I saw before. When he talks about saving people, what does that actually mean? I don't think there's any doubt that it includes kidnapping people and throwing them into the TV. Could he mean saving them through death? He did call himself a savior and said that the other side is a wonderful world. So they'll be saved if they die? What a bunch of crap! The bastard should have gone and saved himself! What do you <laughs> think, senpai? Um... There's something else. If you think about it normally, it's gotta be him. <laughs> but there ain't nothing normal about that world anyways. There's something I've been wondering about for a while. When we first encountered him, he said, You're the ones I saved. Don't worry, I'll save this girl too. So, um, if he saves people by killing them, did he save us too? 
wouldn't he actually have failed to save us? You raise a good point. If he thinks that salvation comes only through death, his words to us make no sense. And another thing, the Namatame who appeared on the Midnight Channel said he failed to save Nanako-chan. Well, maybe he really was trying to save the victims by putting them inside the TV. Okay, but save them from what? C come on, don't get all quiet like that. You guys know I just say the first dumb thing that pops into my head. <laughs> The possibility that he truly intended to save us. But he's still the one who threw in Saki-senpai in that announcer, right? Sure, we haven't nailed down his motives, but that doesn't change the fact that he killed them. Or what? You think someone else was involved? What makes you think so? The possibility of a culprit besides Namatame. Could there be something that proves this possibility? Um... The warning letter. Warning letter? Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to that thing? If Namatami's the killer, he must have been the one who wrote it, right? Let's review them. You recall that the first warning letter said, Don't rescue anymore. And the second one said, If you don't stop this time, someone close will be put in and killed. Yes, that's right. Isn't that kind of odd? Would someone who thinks he's saving people by killing them write stuff like don't rescue or kill? Yeah, and the will be put in and killed part doesn't make sense either. If the killer was writing it, wouldn't it be more like I'll put in and kill? Hey, could this mean... Namatame didn't write it. Yeah, it's almost like someone else wrote this letter. But only the killer would write such a letter and deliver it to Dojima-san's house, right? If someone else wrote it, that could only mean... Dear God. Since this is such an unusual case, I was absolutely convinced that other than the Kubo incident, there was one culprit. So Namatame really was trying to save his victims? Everything is exactly the opposite of what it first seemed. In Namatame's parlance, failing would have been the first two cases when the victims died. If he had used his method twice and failed both times, he would hardly have continued using the TV. And yet he did. It all seems to suggest that someone else wrote this warning letter while observing the entire case. Someone else? Then... It wasn't Namatame that killed Saki-senpai in the announcer? We can't say for certain yet. We urgently need to speak with Namatame face to face. You all work together to take another step towards the truth. <laughs> Rank two for judgment. How though? After what happened yesterday, they said they're gonna tighten security. I have a plan. But there's no time to waste. Let's hurry to the hospital. Hey, this place is off limits. I'm a consultant with the police. I'd like a few words with Namatame-san. May I go in? This is Unit 252, requesting confirmation on an ID. Name of Naoto Shirogane. Huh? Ah, understood. I see. Well, you're on the list. I can give you a few minutes, but I'll have to record your conversation with him for security purposes. Not that I expect you'll get anything coherent out of the guy. He's been spouting nothing but gibberish. I'd like him to accompany me as well. He has no identification, but this is an emergency situation. And he's here in Detective Dojima's stead. Huh? Detective Dojima sent him? I wasn't informed of this. I'll vouch for his identity. Well, I guess it's better than dealing with the man himself. We have our hands full with the transport procedures, so the last thing we need is Detective Dojima running wild. <laughs> Detective Adachi is busy somewhere, too. This is Unit 252. Huh? I see. Has something happened? There's something about a suspicious object out in the lobby. Ah, uh, well then, this works out nicely. 
You should back up your colleagues downstairs. We'll keep watch over Namatame-san. A disturbance in a hospital lobby, after all. It sounds serious. <laughs> I can't believe this is Anything working. happens, hit the nurse call button. I'll leave the rest to you. Understood. Please be careful. I knew they were undermanned, but I didn't expect it to go this smoothly. Wow! There's nothing much inside that suspicious object. So he won't be gone long. Alright, then now's our chance to talk to Namatame. Why are we all going in? Namatame-san, there's something we'd like to ask you. It's tempting to think that you were the culprit behind this entire case. And to be honest, there are many in this town who hope you are. But we are here to learn the truth. So please, answer our questions. Huh? It seems that he understands what you're saying. What should you ask him? Is saving killing people? No. If nobody saves them, they'll be killed. That's why I put them in there. Did you kill those two girls? They were killed. I couldn't save them. Who did you throw in first? Huh? Me? Hmm. Then tell me if my estimation is correct so far. After discovering the Yamano and Konishi incidents, you realized an appearance on the Midnight Channel meant certain death. Thus, to save her from that fate, you kidnapped Yukiko Amagi. You couldn't let her be killed. So you threw her into the TV, preventing the killer in this world from reaching her. And you repeated the process, as more individuals appeared on the Midnight Channel. It all falls into place. His body is weak, but his mind is sound. He's trying to tell us the truth. Yeah, but if the stuff he's saying is true... There's another killer who murdered the first two victims? Indulge us in a few more questions. What should you ask him? Why did you enter the TV? I didn't know. I never thought it would be that kind of place. Who killed the first two? I have no idea. I want to know that too. Why the warning letters? What are you talking about? As I thought. You... believe me? Did they find him? Did they find the one who did such cruel things? Mayumi... Please calm down. Our ability to find the culprit rests on you. We know about the other world. In fact, we're the only ones who can fully understand what you have to say. Only... you? We did blame you for everything at first. But now I think we can accept whatever you got to tell us as truth. Please, tell us everything you can, calmly and slowly. You're willing to listen? Do my story? Well, hurry up and tell it already. <sighs> All right. Soon after my affair with Mayumi became common knowledge, I returned to my parents' home as if to run away from the scandal. And I started drinking heavily to drown my anxieties. I hadn't been able to reach Mayumi at all, and that didn't help either. 
Mayumi, where are you? She'd been disgraced on all the afternoon shows and forced to resign from the program she was on. I caused her so much trouble. I wanted to at least apologize to her, but I couldn't even do that. I lost the will and energy to do anything. Then, one day, the rumor I heard some time ago came back to me. Since I had nothing better to do, I sat down blankly in front of the TV and watched my own reflection. And all of a sudden, there was Mayumi. Mayumi? Is that you? The Mayumi inside the TV looked as if she was calling to me for help. Mayumi? Mayumi! When I reached out unthinkingly to touch her, my arm disappeared into the TV, as if I had dipped it into a pool of water. I was so shocked that I lost my balance and nearly fell face first into the TV. I was so scared. I couldn't understand what just happened. I thought maybe I'd gone insane. In the end, I decided to think of it as just a dream, and I went back to the city the next day after finishing work. The next afternoon when I got to work, I was fired on the spot, as I expected. That wasn't what broke me, though. It was Mayumi being found dead. And not just that, but it had happened in my hometown. Namatame is casting his eyes downward. Painfully. I was dumbstruck. But later on, I remember the image of Mayumi I'd seen that night. Was it not a dream? Could it really have been an SOS from Mayumi? I hadn't touched another TV because the first time was so terrifying, but... I decided to try it again. And I confirmed that none of it was a dream. So that image, was it something Mayumi showed me? calling for help that's how i felt and eventually you learned of the midnight channel i remember that when mayumi was alive she was chasing a rumor about some bizarre tv program i'd heard about it before but i thought it was just an urban legend but then mayumi appeared on it and later turned up dead the more i thought about it the harder it became to believe that the two events were unrelated soon after that I came back to Inaba to answer the police's questions. I'd lost my job, and I wanted to know the truth of Mayumi's death for myself. Then, on another rainy night, someone else appeared on the Midnight Channel. It was a girl. She looked like she was calling for help, just like Mayumi. The first thing that came into my mind was, maybe this girl will be the next to die. And that was Saki-senpai. I'd been following all the news about Mayumi, so I noticed right away that she was the girl who found Mayumi's body. And if my hunch was right, she'd be the next victim. I didn't want her to die the way Mayumi did, so I desperately kept watching. I was consumed with the idea of rescuing her. Then, little by little, her image on the screen came into sharper focus. It became sharper? <sighs> How did you find out it was her? After I came back, my father couldn't bear to see me in such low spirits and gave me a job with the family business. I met that girl when I delivered a package to the liquor store. After agonizing over it, I decided to meet her and told her to be careful. But that same night, on the TV... She looked as if she was being engulfed by some black shape. She was writhing in pain. That's why I warned her. Why won't she pick up the phone? Come on! Please! You know, given what he's seen, you can kind of understand how he came to think that he would be able to save people. It's all about perspective, I guess. Not that I think he did the right thing, but... The next day, they found her dead. 
I knew she was going to be murdered, but I couldn't save her. I blamed myself, thinking there must have been something I could have done. There was no one who depended on me. Nobody at work. Not even my wife. Mayumi was the only one who accepted me for who I was. But she was murdered. And the same person killed another girl. I was... I was beside myself. I couldn't forgive myself for doing nothing. You really did love Miss Yamano. Yes. From the bottom of my heart. Before I was married, my wife made it big in show business. I was happy for her, but it put a strain on our relationship. I think I can kind of relate. It was around that time when I met Mayumi. She was interviewing our candidate for the next election. She was a big-name announcer, but she only worked with local stations, and her attitude towards work was similar to mine. We both came from Inaba, so she was easy to talk to. I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't help getting intimate with her. She gave meaning to my life. Soon after Saki-san was found dead, yet another girl appeared on TV. That was you. She'll be kidnapped next, and murdered. I can't let her end up like Mayumi and that other girl. This time, I'm gonna do something. My opponent was a murderer, who left no clues to his identity. I thought hard about what I could do to protect her from someone like that. I'll never convince her. If she gets suspicious and they arrest me, we'll save her then. The girl inside the TV looked as if she was smiling at me. And that's when it hit me. I apparently had the power to go through the TV screen to the other side. Then, what if I put her into the TV and give her shelter there before the killer gets her? What are you trying to tell me? That it's safe over there? Is that it? The girl inside the TV seemed to smile at me again. And I thought, no matter what kind of place it might be, it's better than being slaughtered. Once things calm down, I could just let her out again. If she's inside the TV, there's no way they can find her. It felt as if everything was starting to come together in my mind. Could it be that Mayumi gave me that power to prevent any more victims from meeting her fate? Was it my mission to save people? But there was a big problem. If I explained the situation to the victim, they wouldn't understand. I had already tried that and failed miserably. It seemed the only thing I could do was to take them away. If that was my mission, I'd just have to do it. Or so I thought. Mayumi, please lend me your strength. People who appeared on the Midnight Channel would be killed. You kidnapped us in order to save us. Mission? Give me a break! You never stopped and wondered about any of this? I thought I was the only one who could help them. I did call the police, but they didn't believe me. I knew the area well, thanks to my job. I had a large truck, and I could move around without suspicion. I thought my job as a delivery man would be the perfect cover for my mission. I thought no one else could do it. But... Are you telling me that I wasn't saving them? If a person is still within the TV world when the fog appears here, they will die. Beginning with Yukiko-san, the people you thought you had been saving were, in fact, in mortal peril. It was my friends here who really saved us all. Wow, what a wham line for him. I had a feeling that was it. When I went after that little girl and entered the TV myself, for the first time, I had some doubts about myself. You refer to Nanakarchan, correct? The police were after me, so I had to get away. But I still felt I needed to do everything I could to save that poor little girl. That's why I went in after her. But the TV world was completely different than I imagined. Such an abominable, grotesque place. 
I knew that the three of you who I saved went back to your normal lives, so I didn't realize how terrible that world was. I never knew. You couldn't even get out of that place on your own. No. That's a cowardly way to put it. Wait, the three of us that he saved? Did he say three? Because he put in Yukiko, Kanji, Rise, and Naoto. That should be four. I'd probably already begun to realize that it was a dangerous place. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have gone to see you all. See us? Wait, are you talking about the concert we did at Juness? Yes. I wanted to know why the ones I saved were all hanging out with each other, and how much you remembered. But in the end, I couldn't bring myself to say anything and ran home. I must have felt too guilty. <laughs> But all the doubts and anxieties I'd been unconsciously suppressing exploded out when I entered the television myself. I thought I was going insane. I probably did. And you know the rest. When I came to, I was lying in a hospital bed. You really were trying to save people. But I ended up doing just the opposite. Oh, what a fool. I always wanted to enter the world of politics and become useful to society. But after losing my job and the woman I loved, all I had left was this power. I convinced myself that world was some sort of sanctuary, and I secretly believed myself to be a hero. I never doubted what I saw on TV and believed everything was as I wanted it to be. I didn't think for myself at all. That's why I couldn't protect them. I'm to blame for all of this. What's done is done. I suppose so. But the things I've done are too serious to be brushed aside like that. I have no intentions of running away from my crimes. I'm prepared to face the consequences. Kidnapping is already a serious crime. And on top of that, I put all those lives in danger. I'm sorry. The Midnight Channel and the Other World? You can hardly be blamed for failing to understand them properly. We must apologize to you as well. Had we let our emotions blind us to the truth, we would have piled all the responsibility on you. I guess from your point of view, people did stop dying once you started saving people. The more you did it, the more you really believed you were preventing their deaths. I'm such a joke. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little tired. What are you all crammed in here for? My apologies. We'll be leaving now. <laughs> Wait. I beg you, please find whoever's behind this. You children are the only ones who know about that world. Hey, don't worry. It's all clear now. He never committed any murders. It was another party who threw the first two victims into the TV. You've taken another step towards the truth. All right, two ranks up in one day. Seekers of Truth has reached level three. Now get out of here! I told you, he's almost ready to be transported. We can't have anything else happen. Sheesh. I better not see you rascals here again. <laughs> rascals? Okay. <laughs> Monaco-chan looks like she's in pain. She's fighting for dear life. This was the last place we saw Teddy, right? He was so worried about her. How can he flake out like this when we have to find the real killer? The police consider the matter closed. We'll have to do all the investigation from here on out. Let's revisit Saki-san and Miss Yamano's incidents and see if we can turn up fresh details. But it's been over six months. Wouldn't the trail be cold by now? I know, but we can't give up. We're the only ones who understand what's really going on. And you never know. People might remember some things now because they've had so much time to think about it. Let's split up and talk to people all over town tomorrow. We'll meet up in the evening to discuss our findings. 
Interrogating NPCs. <laughs> I hope we can find out something about Teddy too. Tomorrow, you'll all be going out to talk to people in town. Will this finally help uncover the information that will lead you to the true culprit? You decide to go home early and get some rest. Alright, I guess I gotta go to bed early. Monday the 5th. Today is the day that school was founded, so you have the day off from school. Okay, whatever. <laughs> We're gonna go figure this out. All right, let's go to the shopping district. I'm gonna just interrogate everybody. About those murders, that incident last spring, I still wonder what happened. It was a pretty big deal, wasn't it? I'd almost completely forgot about that. Wow, I must be getting old, huh? Yeah, well, you were very helpful. About the murders. Uh, what are you talking about? You explained about the incident involving Saki and Yamano, the female announcer. Did all that happen just last spring? Wow, it seems so long ago. Who's gonna remember something from that far back anyway? You were greatly helpful. This fog has gotta be some kind of biological weapon! It's a conspiracy! Yeah, you know who I heard it was? Juness! Yeah, that's right, Juness! The country of Juness is staging an all-out attack on Inava! Oh, at least you can't make that rumor come true in this game. <laughs> Hello, dude. Hey, listen to me. Rosette came and spoke to me. This is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I asked for her autograph and what types of guys she's into. Anyway, what do you want? I'm sure you can see how busy I am. About the murders. Well, didn't they capture the suspect and put a lid on that case? You done asking questions? Good, now go away. I'm very busy talking to Rosette right now. Great. This fog is sure dark and creepy, isn't it? Oh, you have a question for me. Oh, a little while ago, they said the suspect had been caught. It was in the newspaper. That was Namatame-san, right? I remember seeing him from time to time. Oh, how horrible. It really does frighten me. I don't recall seeing any other strange people, so I'm sure he's the culprit. Is it true that there were no other suspicious individuals? Perhaps you should ask someone else about this. Uh, I'm not going to talk to the old man because he's got a quest marker over his head, so he's for, like a random fetch quest. Since all I hear from everyone is poison, poison, I've kind of got freaked out too. I wonder where I can buy a gas mask. I need to get one. Everyone else already has one. What? People are wearing gas masks? Oh, I guess people are wearing gas masks. It's me. Do you recognize me? Why am I outside? Oh, when I'm at home, I just see more news about the murders. I thought I'd stay out here and watch the sunset. Of course, I'm going to watch TV when I go home anyway. Even then, I can't see the sunset because of all this fog. Ah, uh, I hate it. It's so depressing. Ah, uh, do you have a question? Um, recall anyone suspicious? It's a small town. If there was anyone suspicious, there would be rumors going all over. But at least I haven't heard any news on rumors like that, so I'd say there's no such person. Uh, helpful. Um, the motorcycle lover is clearly not very helpful. Alright, let's go somewhere else. I think we've talked to everybody that we can talk to here. How about Juness? Uh, recall anyone suspicious? A suspicious person? Ah, now that you mention it, my friend was saying she saw someone. I think she's just wandered around the shopping district, so why don't you ask her? I just came from the shopping district. Well, I guess I didn't ask her if she recalled anyone suspicious. Huh? Someone told you that I saw a suspicious person. Uh, oh, that. You remember Saki Konishi, don't you? You know, she passed away a while ago. She told me how that Nametame person came to her one day and started spouting all this craziness. Something about the TV. I wonder what that was all about. His relation to Saki. Hey, I don't know what you're implying, but you've got it all wrong. Saki was a good girl. It's just that people misunderstood her. She must be referring to the time when Namatame tried to warn Saki. 
It seems the only thing about Namatame, or it seems the thing about Namatame making advances on Saki was a misunderstanding. Okay. Well, that's, I guess, good to know. Uh, let's go to somewhere else and ask people. I'm gonna go to the Samagawa floodplain and see if I can find anything. No, this is a... Uh, no, I don't want to do a side quest. I don't want to fetch things for you. Well, the fog isn't clearing up, is it? Isn't that just a little strange? My wife is all business as usual, but I'm a little worried. By the way, do you need anything? Uh, recall anything suspicious. We've had a lot of people come to our store, but I can't say anyone was particularly suspicious. Cool. Helpful. Do you know anything? Ah, not too much to ask. Have I seen a strange person? I don't know. Out in the country, if there was anybody strange walking around, everyone would know about it right quick. Okay. Maybe someone by the riverbank will help me. There is no one here. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think there was still somebody at Juness I didn't talk to because I got distracted by that. Um, by the other person having an actual answer. Nope. Never mind. She's just got the stupid quest marker over her head. Ah, there we go. I guess I had to ask that random girl at Juness about the murders. I went and talked to everybody again and finally got on a trigger here. <laughs> you met up with your friends after you finished gathering information. I'm seriously pooped. This stuff's a lot harder when you don't have a badge to flash. I walked around all day and didn't hear anything good. It was the same for me. There was absolutely no talk about the case whatsoever, let alone the true culprit. Ditto for me. Actually, in my case, I kept getting bombarded with questions and couldn't get them onto the main subject at all. <sighs> the killer must be pretty good to have pulled this off without being seen by anyone in this small town. What should we do? Well, one staple, please! <laughs> That's not what I meant. But then again, I guess we might as well take a break. I'll have a crab and egg fried rice. I'll have roast pork ramen with extra noodles. You all finished eating the dishes that you ordered. Oh, now that our tummies are full, let's share what we learned, even if it wasn't much. You spoke with everyone about the information that you gathered today. So, to sum up, there really was no new information. The end? The police had an unusually large number of officers in their initial investigation of the first two incidents. To find facts that even they overlooked would be difficult indeed, now that over half a year has passed. There wasn't a single report of suspicious persons being witnessed to begin with. Miss Yamano had ardent fans, whereas Saki-san didn't, but otherwise the conditions are the same. You know, every time I tried to ask about the case, everyone ignored me and kept ranting about the damn fog. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, that or the Midnight Channel. I asked around about Teddy, too, but no one's seen him. Gee, I wonder where he could have gone. Do you have anything, Naoto? Any new, uh, deductions? <sighs> Without any new data to work with, there isn't much I can do. But there must be someone in town who meets all the criteria for this case. The killer must have a connection to both Saki-san and Miss Yamano, as well as be in a position to observe our actions periodically to some extent. Finally, it must be someone who could approach Senpai's house without arousing suspicion. <sighs> I need some fresh air before I give it more thought. I'll be outside. Just sitting here won't help you think any better. You decide to go outside to get some fresh air. It's snowing. No one.
wonder it's chilly. Ugh, it's freezing out here. Maybe this will help clear my head and get my deductive muscles flexing. Hey, is it snowing? Too bad the fog's so thick. The snow just gets lost in it. There must be something that's been overlooked. It's urgent that you get over the roadblock facing you. The clues you need must already be in your hands. What's the matter? You should go over everything you know one more time. The culprit had some sort of connection with both Mayumi Yamano and Saki Konishi. And judging by the warning letters, the culprit most likely knows about the other side and what you did there. It's highly likely that they also know what Namatame was doing and stood back to watch. Who would know all of these things? Another oddity about the case is that there were almost no witnesses. Both warning letters seem to have been delivered directly to your house, but no one saw anyone suspicious. No one unusual was seen around Mayumi Yamano or Saki Konishi either. Despite the police dispatching an unusually high number of officers to perform a thorough investigation, there must be someone in this small town who fits all the facts. The person who seems to be the most likely culprit is... Alright guys, this is the moment of truth. We have to pick the real culprit. And if we get it wrong, I think it gives you multiple choices. Like, you get, I think, like, three tries. But if you can't guess the right answer, you get the bad ending here again. Yet another opportunity not to get the true ending. Um, I have the correct answer, but... Uh, I, I mean, I'm not sure how the editing for this episode will work out. But even if it makes this episode slightly short, I think I'm going to cut it here. But I'm going to go through our list of potential uh, killers... And I'll let you think about it, and then when the next episode starts, we'll, we'll do the answer. Um, also, funny side note, uh, well, I'll get to the funny side note after this. Our options are Yosuke Hanamura, Chie Satanaka, Yuki Kawamagi, Teddy, someone else, Kanji Tatsumi, Rise Kujikawa, Naoto Shiragane, Ryotaro Dojima, Nanako Dojima, Toru Adachi, Taro Namatame, Mayumi Yamano, Saki Konishi, Kinshiro Moraoka, Mitsuo Kubo, Misuzu Hiragi, Noriko Kashiwagi, Hanako Otani, Ai Ebihara, Ko Ichijo, Daisuke Nagase, Naoki Konishi, Yumi Ozawa, Ayane Matsunaga, um, this is the person you would meet if you had done the music uh, club route. We never actually met Ayane. That would be confusing. Uh, Shu Nakajima, Hisano Kuroda, Eri Minami, or Think Once Again. So that's all the options. So um, I, I haven't confirmed this, but I did he read that somebody out there, when the game first came out, they were concerned that people Googling the game would accidentally spoil themselves on the ending. So they went and Photoshopped and created fake screen caps of every possible sub suspect, including Nanako Dajima, uh confessing to the crime so that people who googled the game would not immediately have it spoiled if every possible option was spoiled in the same way but anyway i'm gonna cut it here unless i don't but i think i am gonna cut it here uh hopefully the editing will work out that way so uh and then when you, we come back next episode we will find out who the real killer is see you then <laughs>